losing your job can be devastating and can it can trip you up and spiral you into depression extremely fast so today i'm going to be talking about how i lost my job and my goal is to provide you with some hope that this thing is going to get better so stay tuned what's up everybody this is chris from the rewired soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution and if you haven't figured it out yet, the job I lost was actually a long time ago. I'm still working at a drug and alcohol treatment center. Sorry for the clickbait action, but this is a very, very important message and story that I have to share with all of you who are unemployed and dealing with depression. This is actually a video I've been meaning to make for a long time now, um, but it was actually inspired by a good friend of mine who recently lost her job. So I figured now would be the right time to talk about it because I know a lot of, out, of you out there are struggling because you're out of work. So I'm about to share a little story with you. So kick back, relax, get yourself a cup of joe or some tea or whatever it is that you drink. But anyways, relax, and I'm gonna share this little story with you. So um, back in 2012, I got clean and sober and I was out of work. I was completely unemployed for a very long time. It was uh, over 15 months at least because that's when I moved back to Las Vegas. This was extremely difficult for me because I'm a workaholic when I'm not working. Like I get very anxious and like I need to do something, I need to be productive, but I'm very grateful that I didn't have to work um, for that first year because I was able to focus on myself. And that's where a lot of the improvement in my mental health actually happened because it was an entire year where I could focus on me. And thanks to my wonderful mother, she was helping to support me while I really got my act together and got on my feet. So after 15 months of being in California away from my son, I decided to move back to Las Vegas, be a father to my son, get on my feet, start working again, you know, be a normal adult, right? And it was rough. I came back to Las Vegas with $200 in my pocket, no idea what I was gonna do. I could barely afford a bus pass to get around to places and nothing was working out. I was applying for stuff. I, I was willing to take any job too and nothing was panning out. Then one day um, I was with my friend at lunch. We bumped into another friend and he starts talking to me. He's like, hey, what's up, man? When'd you get back into town? I'm like, hey, you know, and um, I explained to him I was looking for work. He's like, hey, you remember that dude from high school? I'm like, yeah. He's like, dude, he owns uh, a computer repair shop. And like, for those of you who don't know, I'm a big computer nerd. I've been building computers since I was like, this big, in case you can't see this way down there. Um, so I was like, dude, like give me his info, let's talk. And I ended up talking to my old buddy from high school and within like a week, I had a job at his computer repair shop. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, this is working out, like everything's falling into place and this is amazing. And like, by the way, that's not where this story ends. This isn't the hope I meant to give you because in a, within about two months, within about two months, I lost that job. I got fired. I got fired by my friend from high school who got me the freaking job. And it was over some bull stuff. Gotta keep it family friendly. But anyways, let me tell you a little bit about this job too. First off, I hated it. I absolutely hated it, okay? Um, one reason I hated it, I had to stand up on my feet all day. If you haven't noticed, I'm kind of a heavy set dude and being on my feet all day is not good. But the biggest problem I had with the, the job was the main computer technician. Like every day at lunch, I was like calling my friends and I'm like, please talk me out of beating the living hell out of this guy. Like I just loathe this dude and I had to work with him every single day and I just absolutely despised him. But I ended up losing that job and it sucked. It absolutely sucked. Like there's nothing worse than everything starting to work out and then it just comes crashing down. And during that time, that two months I was working at the place, I had just signed a lease on an apartment, um, got the power turned on, all the utilities and everything like that. And I lose this job and I'm like, dude, how am I going to afford this place? And I started looking for a job and I couldn't find one. And it just got really depressing because when you have depression and anxiety like I do, like there's the depression of being unemployed and then the anxiety of like, how am I gonna pay my bills and things like that? And my depression was getting worse. Like even though I was over a year sober and back in Las Vegas, me and my son's mom's relationship was still not good and she still didn't fully trust me to be around our son. So not only was I depressed about that, but even if I could see my son, I couldn't do anything with him. Like I could barely feed myself, you know? and. Like one of the one of the 
worst parts about losing your job is like we we begin to feel useless. Like there's so much weight that we put on being employed, right? And we feel useless, especially if you're like any type of parent or breadwinner, you know, but it's terrible for all of us. And I got to a point where I was so depressed. I was so depressed. This is the first and only time in my recovery where I was this close to a relapse, this close. And if any of you have been following my channel and you've heard some of my story, like I got sober with a 10% chance of living. So I think it's important to recognize that if I'm thinking about relapsing, I'm thinking about suicide. Like it's not just a relapse for me. If I drink or use again, I will die. And I was at the point where that was about to happen. I was gonna take the last, you know, 20 bucks in my pocket, walk across the street and go get a drink. And it's crazy too, it's crazy, because I know a lot of you struggle with this too, but I was extremely depressed about a job that I lost that I hated. Like, when I put it into words like that, like, can you see how that's a little bit strange? We get so upset about this job that we didn't even want, right? And uh, in case you didn't realize it, like, I didn't relapse. I ended up talking to some people. They talked me off the ledge. And what I ended up doing, and this is my pro tip for everybody out there, like, you need to make your job finding a job, okay? I started hustling. I was sending out about 50 resumes a day through Craigslist, just going nuts on that thing, all right? And I ended up getting so many job interviews that I didn't even have enough bus money to get to all the job interviews, all right? Like, I was just hustling like crazy. One of the things that I always tell my clients when they're looking for work, I'm like, don't stop looking for a job until you are signing paperwork for the job. Because I see far too many people get like an interview or a second interview and they put every single egg in that basket and they sit around and watch Netflix all day like, yeah, I pretty much got this job and then they don't get it and they get even more depressed. And when you do that, you're setting yourself up for failure. But anyways, anyways, after a little while of looking for jobs and getting all these different job offers, I ended up getting a job offer for this company called Text Broker, okay? And I hated what I was doing in the past and then this new job that I got, like, man, like, it was perfect. First off, I was making more money than I was at the previous job. Second off, I got to sit down all day at a computer Next, there was no dress code at all. I can come in there wearing pretty much anything. And I got to sit at a computer, listen to music all day. Like, it was a dream job. Like, it didn't pay me a ton of money, but, like, it was so much better than the job I lost. And I remember just sitting there thinking, like, oh, my God, like, I almost ruined everything I had just because I was so impatient, you know, because I didn't see that I could potentially get this other job that I would absolutely love, you know? and Something I'll, I'll throw out there for all of you, if you are unemployed and depressed and watching this video, if you are even a half decent writer, like writing, like if you have a high school level of writing, check out textbroker.com, okay? This isn't uh, uh, a sponsored deal or anything like that. I don't even know if I can get in trouble for advertising them, but whatever. But anyways, they're a website where they link up writers and companies together. Um, and you can write, you can freelance, you can write from home and make money. There are a ton of different ways to make money from home. Like in 2018, like you should never be worried about not working. There are so many ways to make money from home. If any of you watching this need ideas on how to make money working from home, like please leave comments down below. And I'm not talking about these like fly by night kind of crazy things. I know dozens and dozens and dozens of people making a living working from home. But anyways, I worked for this place called Text Broker and I was an account manager. All right, so I managed different accounts. I managed these big projects that we would do, like website designs and, and all sorts of stuff, right? And I ended up managing a project for a place called American Addiction Centers. And those of you who don't know me, you don't know why that's a big deal. So I start working on a project for this place called American Addiction Centers, and I work my butt off. And the, the person who was my contact at American Addiction Centers loved me, she loved me, she loved my communication, she loved how hard I worked, she loved my customer service, she loved how I made sure the project went well, she loved all that stuff, right? And one week she was gone and she says, hey, uh, I'm gonna be out of town, I'm gonna be in Las Vegas. I'm like, I live in Las Vegas. So when she got back in town, I was like, hey, what were you doing in Las Vegas? And she's like, oh, we have a drug and alcohol treatment center out there. And I'm like, really? 
So what I did, and I hope nobody from Text Broker is watching this, I started emailing her on the side. I'm like, yo, I'm a drug addict and alcoholic in recovery, and like, I would love to work in that industry. And to shorten that story up, um, a few months later, a job position opened up and I ended up getting a job for American Addiction Centers. And that's the job I currently have. I've been here for about two and a half years and it's the best job I've ever had. I've never had a job where every day when I wake up, I'm excited to go to work. I'm excited to go in and help people, help people who are struggling with mental illness, struggling with drug addiction, with alcoholism. I get to go in there every single day and do something that I absolutely love. Hell, I love it so much that I come home and make YouTube videos about stuff I do at work all day. That's how much I love it. But the moral of this story is, okay, I don't, I don't care if you're religious or spiritual or you believe in karma, but think about that for a second. I lost that job that spiraled me down into depression, but what if, what if I never lost that job? What if I was still working there today? I would have never had the opportunity to work at the amazing job that I love so much today. So I know, I understand, if you're, if you're in a dark place right now, if you lost your job, if you're unemployed and everything seems hopeless, I get it, I've been there. But I just beg of you, like cling on to hope, cling on to hope, like just do your best to be optimistic, okay? Maybe, maybe there's some bigger reason that you don't even know of yet of why you are no longer working at the place. There Maybe there's a reason why you didn't get a job at other places. Like there's so much that we don't know and don't understand, but I've learned to just develop this blind faith that things are gonna work out and it has not failed me since. As long as I do the footwork and just continue to do my best, things work out, right? Like. This is something that just keeps me in a good mood every single day, no matter what happens to me. I'm like, you know what? Maybe that happened for a reason. If I can just keep that in my head, like maybe that happened for a reason, you know? So I hope, I hope if it, nothing else, I hope this story inspired you a little bit. I hope it motivated you a little bit. I hope it got you a little bit out of that funk. Just keep reminding yourself, maybe this is for a reason and maybe it's setting you up for something amazing. It happened to me and I'm nobody special. It can happen to you too, all right? But anyways, if you know somebody who is unemployed right now and they're going through a struggle, do me a favor, share this video with them, okay? You gotta promise me, you gotta promise me right now, share this video with somebody you know who is unemployed, all right? But anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental health. So go ahead, hit that little round subscribe button right below. And if you wanna check out some other awesome videos on this channel, click or tap on one of those thumbnails right there. But anyways, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul, and I will see you next time.